Well, hello, welcome to I Love Gay Today. We're jumping back into the business world in Toronto, and we are here with Callum Brecken. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you doing, Matt? Oh, fan- just as fantastic as you. Yeah. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed chatting with you uh, even prior to this uh, uh, this interview, but um, it just fascinates me. Um, you know, we're doing all this. We're we're out there on LinkedIn and other social media, and we're creating content like this. And sometimes we're thinking, like, you know, sometimes you kind of get lost in your own little bubble, your little world. Then I see what you're doing, and I'm like, oh my god, there's other people out there that uh, I feel so well aligned with. Oh yeah, definitely. Lots of people out there doing lots of good stuff. But the the yeah. cool business kids we tend to follow around in the same circles. <laughs> we do, but I love it. You're uh, you're creating content uh, uh, similar to these types types of videos. You're interviewing some great people in business, which we'll chat about. But it's all tied in. It's all really geared towards uh, your prime. You know, bringing more awareness to what you do and who you are, and your business. You're a SEO specialist and consultant. And tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so so hello. Uh, I'm Callum Brecken, and I'm an SEO specialist and consultant. So mostly, what I do is I teach people how to date Google correctly, because oh. a lot of people think that SEO is just like oh, a bunch of this tech stuff, or oh, you can just throw up a website and then Google will send you traffic. That is absolutely not what that that is not what happens. Uh, you have to learn how to date Google because Google is a long term person. They are like, if you want to hold my hand. Uh, you got to date me for at least like six months. If you want to kiss me, it's going to take you at least a year. And that's why if you've ever talked to or dealt with an SEO person, they're like, it takes a long time to kind of see these results because you have to put in the work. And so many people want like instant results. They go for the ads because that's going to give them instant results in that kickback. But what they don't understand is that when you're building through SEO and you're building a website and you're building that content there, it's going to live there for life. And so you're building an asset into your business. Whereas when you turn off those ads, all of that revenue, all of those leads, all of that goes away. But when you stop running ads, you can still have your blog, you can still have your SEO and, and your website going. And that is free traffic that Google is sending to you time and time again, month after month, year after year, sometimes that you paid for one time and it continues to give you that, you know, uh, influx every single month. And so that's how I try and help people kind of understand the two differences. Neither one is better than the other. They both have their pros and their cons, but if you want to build an asset, you should probably invest in your SEO. It's like the gift that keeps on giving big time. Definitely. Yeah. And and it makes sense. Um, I've, you know, I've enjoyed kind of, I feel like I've had a front row seat with when Google first started with, with their search and they were really competing with so many other search engines and Yahoo and so forth, but they've really evolved over time. And um, are you, do you feel that you're able to kind of keep up with some of the changes and evolution that they, uh, that they go through uh, on a, every few months basis as well? Oh. Definitely. Like uh, any good SEO will be constantly learning. Like I'm on YouTube all the time. I'm watching people. I'm learning what they're doing, what's working, what's not working anymore, what's evolving in YouTube, uh, in Google. And it also spills over into YouTube because YouTube's also an SEO search engine owned by Google. So, you know, tying all these pieces and these things together, going down that, <laughs> you know, the rabbit hole of what's working, what's not working and for the most part, there are general overall things that you should do on your website that are going to make a difference. Like you have to have an about page, you have to have a contact page, like basic staples that Google wants to know who you are. Because really, if you think about it, like any relationship at the beginning of the relationship, you don't know who this person is. You might like them. You might be like, oh, they're super cute, but you don't know who they are. And that's the same thing for Google. You put up your website. Google still doesn't truly know who you are. And so how you do that, how you date Google is you put up more content on your website. So that can be articles. Uh, it can be blog posts. But the more text you put on your website, the more it gives Google to read and the more you well, maybe not you, but the SEO person links things together, ties, you know, connects the pieces for Google. It can go, oh, okay, I know about this. Matt talks about I love gay or gay pride so much. He must be an expert in it. Let's send him more traffic because he clearly has the largest body of work on the internet about this one topic. He now has what we call topical authority. So we're going to send the most traffic his way. 
as long as we're getting the signals that people are happy with the content that they're getting from there and you can just continue ranking like that. But that's a dating process. It takes months to build that library of content to decide what keywords you're going to go after and put all this together. So that's the work you're really doing with an SEO when you get together is they're sitting down, they're auditing what you have on your website, and then they're making maps of like, okay, where should we go after? What makes sense for you and your business? What do you want to rank for in terms of keywords so that when somebody Googles XYZ, you're the first thing that pops up. There's a way to build that into the system so that maybe you can't rank for it right now, but in the next year, six months, we can build you up to eventually ranking for that and being number one. Yeah, I hear you. It's interesting. You use the you use the word relationship and dating a lot, which I would say is, is a really good thing because I've seen uh, what you uh, shared with me that you send to a potential new client. And this is somebody that, you know, they're not even working with you yet, but you know, you've, you've invested the time to audit their website, give them that feedback, but it fascinated me because you really put, you did something I haven't seen anybody else do. You create this video and you're in the video as well as the screens capture, you know, shots about where you're walking them through, but that is an incredible relationship builder for folks that don't know who you are. Oh, thank you. I just think it's like, I'm such a tech nerd. Like I love technology and things that make life easy for me. And I know that when I'm watching something or working with somebody, if they have a video and they're in the video, like on YouTube, if they're in the video and they're walking you through like a slide or templates or whatever, it just kind of adds that extra, you know, piece to the puzzle for you. And so when somebody approaches me, like, you don't know me, I'm just some guy on the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so if you come to me and you ask for a free audit, which I offer on my website, then, you know, I go in and I make those videos so that you can get to know who I am as a person. You can get to know me talking and kind of like what my rhythm is. And then I can also show you the expertise that I have and the things that I would recommend for your website. And then we can move on from there. And from there, it at least gives people a little taste of what they could expect with me. And then from there, they can book a session, like a, a actual meeting uh, over Zoom, or maybe they just had more than enough information. They take that and they're like, okay, I'm going to start on these things. And sometimes I don't actually end up working with people until months or even years later, because they had to get a lot of the basics in line first before they were kind of ready to do that investment piece. Yeah, it's interesting, but I liked harping on that word relationship because that's what I also noticed. Uh, uh, you really go above and beyond outside of you know just doing business behind those behind that computer, and uh, you're very involved with your local Canadian LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce, and and in fact, you were in Denver, I think, with the NGLCC conference as well. I was. This is correct. It was my first NGLCC, and it will not be my last because <laughs> I had an absolute blast. I'm very excited for Palm Springs this summer. Yes. Uh, never been, so I'm excited. Uh, yeah, I, I got involved with the CGLCC, the Canadian LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce, um, last year, just kind of just before last year, I'd found out about it, and I actually got into their uh, Out for Business Mentorship Program. And so I was accepted in that program. So I went through the whole year program with them uh, that just finished this past September, uh, graduated. I got the little plaque over here on the wall um, and it opened up a whole new world of business. I didn't realize was accessible to me because being in the tech sector, especially in my sector, it's heavily influenced by tech bros. Um, there are more women getting in there for sure, which is great. But when you look around, there's nobody who's kind of representing the LGBTQ, at least nobody putting their hand up saying, hey, I'm over here. Um, and so joining the CGLCC, getting involved into that organization kind of opened up this whole new world of being like, oh, wow, I'm not the only one in business and going to their conferences and meetings and, and hangouts. It is the community I wish I had known about before because I was like, oh, this is my people. They don't kind of glaze over when you talk about business or entrepreneurship, like some people in your life might do or who just don't understand, like, why don't you just work a normal job? Yeah. And you're in a group of people who are like so excited and rooting for you and like egging you on. And it's just if you aren't involved in one of your organizations, whether it's a local chamber or something, get involved. But I, but but it, I, that's what I was saying at the beginning though. But you've taken that to the next level where you've actually interviewed uh, like Daryl from the CGLCC and Justin with the NGLCC National Gay and Lesbian Chamber, and you talk specifically about relationships and people do business with people. 
Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, so yeah, so I've interviewed them on my podcast, the business gay, and I really wanted to, the reason I started the business gay podcast is because I wanted to create that visibility that I didn't see in the business tech world. And specifically like on Spotify and Apple, if you go and look in those entrepreneurs, it's a lot of, a lot of tech bros and a lot of great, amazing women, but there's still not somebody carving out that space saying like, Hey, the LGBTQ community is here as well. We are doing big business. We are making amazing moves and doing things for ourselves. And I wanted to kind of put that spotlight there to say, Hey, we need to have something and someone here. And so I interviewed Daryl about the $25 million grant that the Canadian government gave to the CGLCC to foster LGBTQ entrepreneurship, because it does bring in, what was it, $22 billion a year in revenue, and it employs almost half a million Canadians. Um, so that's an investment the government made. And then also, Justin, uh, in regards to relationships, because that's really, at the end of the day, all business is, is we're people doing the best we can with what we got. And you might as well as do that with really awesome people, whether business comes from it or not, being in the vibe of good people will help you stay in the vibe of being good people. And you were with really great people with my friend, no fool from queer tech in Montreal. And you were a part of that conference and interviewed him as well. So I was like, you know, all my friends. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've watched you. I've kind of like sneakily been watching you on, on LinkedIn a lot. Uh, and I, I was meaning to reach out, but maybe I guess I was like too shy or too nervous. I'm quite introverted, like secretly on here. People are like, you're so out there. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like a chronic introvert. If I you ever met me, you. <laughs> oh, no. if you ever met me like in person, like I will stay inside of my house by myself for like a week at a time and only leave to go do groceries and like dodgeball once a week. And that's because I have to force myself to leave my house. Um, but yeah, it was really magical. I was on the board of advisors for Queer Tech um, here in Canada and for their Queer Tech conference that just happened in Montreal. Absolutely fantastic event for tech professionals, uh, LGBTQ and ally tech professionals. And uh, it keeps getting bigger and bigger every single year. But I was uh, gifted being able to interview Nafel and Andy uh, as the closing kind of ceremony to the conference, because I think people wanted to know what their story was and where queer tech was going into the future. And so I was able to do that on stage. My first live recording it was very fun. It was very exciting. Yeah, uh, I, I, I can commiserate. And, uh, but lastly, um, it kind of it deviates a little from everything we talked about, but you do a, another podcast, Gay Men Going Deeper, that's not necessarily about business, but that's very popular, right? Yeah, so I did. I did step away from that podcast. I still love them. I'm actually going to one of the Christmas parties like next week. Um, but it, I, I was in that business from the start of the pandemic. We started Gay Men Going Deeper together, Michael and Matt and I, um, and they're absolutely amazing guys. And uh, it's personal development, sexuality, and mental health. And it's quite, quite a popular podcast. It continues to grow. I think it's almost exponentially starting to really pick up pace now. It gets a large number of downloads every month. Um, and I really grew a lot with that business and grew a lot with them. But at the beginning of this year in 2023, I was like, you know what? I'm feeling more called to the tech. Like I want to just do SEO and strict tech and strict business. And that's what I had been doing over there in that business. Um, and we talked about it and and they understood and they are like, we kind of saw it. Um, and so they, you know, we all wished each other well, and we still support each other. Uh, and I stepped out. And that's when, you know, I took some time, what did I want to do? And that's when I started the Business Gay podcast to kind of layer on top of all the SEO work that I do. And your talents for just, uh, you know, creating these podcasts. So I, I, I love what you're doing. Right? Well, I love the nerdiness of it. Like there is also an SEO reason behind <laughs> the podcast. Like it's not just a podcast, like there is a way to use a podcast to drive your SEO and traffic to your website if you do it correctly. Um, and so that really nerd, I really nerd out on all that kind of stuff. Oh, this is great. Well, I'm looking forward to, uh, you mentioned Palm Springs and uh, NGLCC conference this summer uh, or 2024. I will plan to be there as well. So we'll be able to hang out and meet in person. Awesome. I'm super excited. I really want to go to the Trixie Motel and I heard a rumor that they're they're gonna try and put on an event maybe wow. there's wow. no guarantees but like that would be the most fun ever is to have an event at the trixie motel where would they put us all i don't know if it's big <laughs> enough i mean they get, th that conference gets well over a thousand people yeah it was like 1500 people in denver yeah yeah 
But it'll be, it'll be wonderful. And I'm just really glad that you're able to kind of take a few moments of your time and share a bit of your story with our audience here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. This has been magical. Absolutely. Well, see you soon. And it feels yeah. good, so good.